Start the recording again. We're back. We didn't even take a break. We're going right into game five. It's game five, you guys. Are you? I can't. I did not think this was going to game five. I did not believe it. I, I, in my heart of hearts, I, I thought it was going to be closed out. North America has ever had. And he needs to have the opportunity to carry him. But here we are, man. Yeah, so many it's the final game. Okay, let's watch the bans, series, right? Trying to avoid the second phase it kind of goes back to the, the traditional bans. They do ban out once again, the Ivern so and the Ash, with total knowledge which have been position. really strong and impactful in this game for both year, sides. For TSM, Lulu and Shen, both TSM obviously didn't right make right as good a use of it. In Lulu that last game, first pick almost non -stop in but it's series. it's just such but a powerful champion, massive. and I think time, I think the problem play. last game wasn't the Ivor. Okay, I was gonna say that would be an interesting departure from the Lulu first pick for both sides, like every game. <laughs> um, but no, so we're seeing pretty again. standard bans for both this sides. These adaptations are not wild adaptations. These are two of, to go with the like, still the top uh, tier people. What is interesting is the willingness players. now players. that it's the last game to say, okay, you know what? If you've got the counter pick, you use the counter pick. Show me your counter to Syndra. This is, this is TSM asking Cloud9 a question, saying, TSM Do you have something prepped year, game that can deal with Sun Syndra? Second place Do you have a counter pick? Can Jensen play Syndra something into Bjergsen and Syndra so that actually picks, answers that pick? You, TSM wants to pick extremely strong lanes and try and win this game fast. Contracts also back into a pick. He's very comfy on. There's the Skazix and there's Echo. And that's the answer. I think we saw this earlier in the series too. We saw an Echo come out against the Syndra. This is the answer, right? At least in the current meta for patch 7.6, this is the answer. Because if you get all in from Syndra, just pop that ultimate chrono shift away in general look incredible come back with full pick. health you know, so and because all of the focus it, again went right. to these power the picks in on the it and leaves open the that camille man it leaves open that camille and tsm i think is very yeah, happy with this first bands, round of draft everybody's happy with yeah, this is thrilled about lulu it seems for both teams Kha'Zix, I think, is very helpful for, us. for Cloud9. Best top laner for us. But this feels like a bit more of an answer and when to that this. Bottom lane cracks, it Whereas all three of these feel like very so proactive, like forcing picks that say, these are what we want to do. This is our game style. We're going to play our way. These all have very strong pick potential. These all have very strong like finishing potential for initial engages. What I would like to see coming out of Biofrost is a strong engage support. Something like a Thresh, which I know that's not going to happen. <laughs> but something like a Thresh that has additional pick power, but is really strong opening engage. Hell, even a Blitzcrank, you know? Something that's something's got really strong that works with this team. Yeah, and accentuates their positives. Uh, but Good additional pick here that that was from the Varus with his ultimate. And we saw but it's something that's also pretty vulnerable to the, the two bands from the top. The things Fox. that gave TSM yeah, trouble. This is the Shen, the Fizz, that can deal TSM with... Is already kind of uh, we know their general style of composition. Oh so my god. C9, <laughs> Camille, that. I just saw Bjergsen, and I couldn't think of any other name. Um, the Fizz to stop the counter for Camille. The Shen, because Shen has been really effective in this series. Good band of pressure Ray. These are just power bands. I don't think those are particularly like because of this composition. Karma, definitely a good choice given this composition so far, because this is a composition that wants to run at you, that wants to get a pick and really punish you. And we see Sneaky come in, it gives him a little bit more defensive. Not only is it just one of the like strongest ADCs out there right now, but it, it allows him some extra mobility, even though he is more skirmish range, they're going to be diving so at you so being able to dash pulls, back and be very effective in that short range kind of skirmish fight 
He has and here comes Clint. He actually beat Zig when he was playing Clint. This is going to be a fun one. one. This is going to be a fun way to end out the series and here. And we see the hover on Thresh. This will be the first Thresh. time in a while we've seen Thresh, Thresh brought out in North America. At least North America has not been about you can take the shorter range tanks in the bot lane. The range Bard? It's actually going to be Nami. All right. Nami was banned in a previous game. So it looks like that's going to be the comfort pick they come back to. Nami does have good engage potential with the wave, also disengage potential. She has good picks as well with her bubbles, and the sustain coming out from her heal can accentuate the ability to dive because it can make sure that if she starts it on a nearby ally who's kind of like just tanking in the front, and then somebody dives like Lee Sin goes way deep or Camille goes way deep, she can start the heal on the person who's in the front. It'll bounce off an enemy to the person who's really deep and give them a critical amount of sustain to make it through that dive and actually make the fight something that turns out successful for them. What I'm really interested in seeing is how this Kled works in the top lane. I don't know the Kled Camille matchup. I'm not sure how that's going to turn out. I, I feel like it's going to be one of those things where one side really makes it work. Well, let's see. I mean, it was it was the pocket pick counter pick at the end. So I, I expect C9 has a lot of practice on this, and it's not hard to get practice against Camille. <laughs> so I, I would think that they're prepared for this. And a win here really would solidify Jensen. We hear the TSM chance. That's what it's all about, man. This is the final game. Whoever wins is the North American champion. They get that trophy, man. The one thing that really oh. lets him down as a play is the fact that he hasn't won. Bjorkson has done a lot of winning on the other side. I'm glad of the this series came to so game five. Now. Can push off TSM to okay, you see the corrupting potion game coming out from Echo? Probably a still going to be like a glass cannon damage so Echo. It's hard to ask for anymore. I, I would be surprised if it's Tank Echo in this composition. I, it could work, but don't let the Corrupting Potion fool you. Echoes just like to go that even if they go damage. Cloud9 chance coming in. Oh, we have a Cloud9 chance. Oh, man. Just this is so up. exciting. Okay. At standard starts, it seems, from both sides. Now, one thing it I looks like both ADs this game decided to go for the extra sustain in lane. Neither of them, side. since the sustain the seems games, debatably equal coming out of the supports, neither of them feels like they have an edge in that matchup. Very worthless, very fast. But it is so they're going to just both take the long sword, extra pots. The early game is so pivotal here because there's a swingy top lane, but there's also a swingy mid lane. If Echo pulls ahead of Syndra, he just completely closes on him over and over again and takes the pressure away from Cinder. And TSM's got this very pick-based team. Oh my god, it's actually 50-50. Holy smokes. Okay. This is good, out. man. This is a good series. This is what a finals is supposed to be like wow. for us. Hanser gonna leash for Sven Skarin. Very good. That'll help Lee Sin get through those. Lee Sin, one of the ones who has a little bit more trouble we'll with that first camp. He's actually able to clear the whole jungle start. fairly easily, There's but just that first camp is a little tough. When trying to counter jungle early on, it's incredibly dangerous. But Gives a little initiative to Kled in the lane, but not much. Largely negligible. Good trades to start out coming for Cloud9 in the bot lane here. Every time it feels like sneaky and smoothie right now, have pushed this one up. Still looks like standard starts. Nothing crazy coming out of the junglers here. It looks like Hanser's winning these early fights from the shield that's coming out, the physical damage shield. This is what Ray wanted to happen. He actually took a little bit of time to level. And now that they're level two. really great Clyde players is knowing when to fight until dismount. Because if you can dismount at a safe location, you can remount back up, you get that health back, and that is something yeah, that allows you to get This is a really good deep board here to get vision of where Lee Sin is on the map. 
spot is fenced. Well, that enables they contracts to come alone. and look for this gank. And since Ray has been going in so aggressively, just trying to trade, because if, until he dismounts, he wants to just work through his own health pool and trading, then wait, work up the remount, and then once he's remounted, it's like free health pool. It's like healing for a huge amount. So this is... Got the dismount. There's a hook shot away, this is something you didn't also. see the Kha'Zix coming in by the time he triggered on the hook shot. He's coming here. He's already coming back to hit Ray and try and knock him up within range of the turret by the time Kha'Zix shows. And now that he's shown, there's no more mobility for Hanser outside of his flash. So Hanser flashes. He doesn't dodge enough of the damage, and contracts flashing over can finish him. And the dismount actually dismounted and dropped aggro onto a minion, so contracts doesn't even take hardly any damage off this and gets to clear this top side jump. Because they never would have felt safe going for that game if they had not seen Sven scaring down on the bottom side. And it's that push that's absolutely the right. That because they knew Lee Sin so was here, like we said, well that's how the they felt comfortable enough to go for that to dive. Third good start in a row. Monza waiting now. Does he did instantly teleport back to lane. We'll watch this dive again. Just so well executed by Cloud9. Landing watch the, the aggro drop here. They're sure to put the aggro on Ray, and because that and minion followed her into the turret with a call for help. Yeah, dismount means you lose that turret aggro. You're okay, safe great. They know that there's a pink ward in tri brush. What is interesting to note about that kill, though, is since it went over to Contracts, while the wave was in an advantageous Contracts position Contracts is just going to clear out the jungle, farm up, look for ganks elsewhere. Echo's coming in. Yeah, good. They don't have but it doesn't immediately vision of this, it doesn't look like. This just seems like they saw the bot lane positioning more aggressively to start preparing for the ganks, so they backed off defensively. And because of that, Echo retreated. Now they've established the Ward in the and this is why they play so defensively. That's a lot of power that can come out of Sneaky. Lulu and Lucian are quite a strong lane. It's not like it straight beats Nami Vars, but Nami needs to be able to have time to sustain them up through that. And she doesn't have time if you're bursting. Jensen going forward, but he actually, in going for that shield, walks into a gank. Oh, it's so unfortunate. And they didn't know because there's no vision up here, right? Even though Lee Sin just spent a long time looking for a gank top, if anything, that made them say Lee Sin is up here in the top side jungle. So he felt safe to go in for a more aggressive play, and he actually doesn't even trigger the shield that didn't look like. Oh. And that's the kill, mind you, right before Echo hits 6. So Bjergsen's gonna hit together. six first and be able to all in Echo right rush, before he can time wind her out of it. If there's one thing I do know about Chrono Ray, shift back out of it. Very, very good. Exactly. Has been camped at the number one spot in NA Challenger pretty much the entirety of this year. It's his team play that needs to come in. So those little moves in lane could be why we're seeing Ray on these carry champions. Hanser are making a smart move, setting up the way so that trying to establish control against. around the that dragon, not investing too much ward coverage there because it is just an ocean drake. There's not a lot of priority put on it. So no huge combat advantage right now. Yeah, pay attention to that when Hanser hits level six though, since his teleport is going to be coming out. control ward there and establish a little bit of forward vision himself. He will spot out contracts. But if he can keep this wave somewhat Which will give split, them a little bit more with information about in, that's the how they can play top lane with Hanser here. Hanser are going to take a little bit of damage. Good trades back and forth. Jensen can't quite blink Jensen. in time. So he does take that last little bit of chunk. The Dark Seal is going to make the heals from his Corrupting Potion even more effective there. Wouldn't worry too much about the sustain. They're both 6 now as well, so that really shy window Bjergsen might have been able to exploit is already down. That doesn't have a lot of and mid lane is effectively in the area equalized right now. 
Bjergsen has a little bit more damage, but it's, it's countered by the stronger sustained Jensen's is bringing out with his build, so... That teleport play. That Svenskeren, I feel like, has been pretty smart Basically this equal. side of the jungle for here. Yeah, Ray not able to rotate really in time. They're going to go for Bjergsen with the ult, I think. Oh, Bjerg, Jensen, get Jensen does go oh, in for the all in here and has his chrono break up. Ray goes forward. He actually flashes to get in range, and the bear trap pulls him back, and he's going down. Top lane, investing in Jensen, giving that faith over to him that he can carry That's with That's so help. much. Look at how many were there. That was the, the whole team came there because it's so important to make sure that Echo can get ahead of the Syndra. Because if he doesn't, then Syndra is going to be able to roll through. She has to be denied her ability to look at that. The bear trap at the very end is what makes it happen. Oh, so close. Relative if Syndra gets far enough ahead of Echo, she's able to just use her normal abilities to force him to need to use his ultimate to heal. And if that can be the case, then Syndra will always have her ultimate whenever Echo loses his. And that's how you get the real kill pressure in that lane. They're early game push on pretty much every lane. So when they're getting dove in two of their lanes, that's trouble. The C9 bot lane really does deserve so much credit. They There's a lot of ward coverage coming out of C9 right now. They can push bottom, which allows the them to mid and sneak into that kill there. So both and of the kills have been given to massively from the C9 bot lane and their excellent play. Summon a little bit of 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 a little but it ha really has been that bottom lane, despite the fact that CS does look even in the wave, is now pushing back to C9. C9 spent so much time pushing that wave up, which has all opened up that last exchange in mid. So things looking good so far. Cloud9 up two kills and about 400 gold, but as just close seems as so even. Expect, it's really hard to tell. This, this is this is going to be a point of conflict right now. An edge for them. They have TP advantage on Hauntzer They right don't now. go so for the Drake the here. They're the going for a possible yeah, fire just right resetting into the lane and trying to maintain vision control. Just got There's the no team. reason to be so super not risky not with it because it's just an ocean break. Hunter would have an opportunity to try and teleport. That could have been it, but he's engaged in combat with Ray up top. Yep. He's kind of fighting him there. Biofrost is going to be able to heal up through that just fine. Rushes the setup for TSM. Blue buff also over to Bjergsen. They, they do secure the, the second blue buff, so that does to deny do. Echo a blue buff, Question which is a very mindful and engaged or invade by Lee Sin. To say, okay, he just got a kill, you're going to be focused on that and rotating around the dragon. So we're going to take your blue buff, and then they do wind up securing their own. So that's two blues on their side. The ultimate, not going to land. So Lee Sin's just going to back out here and reset us right now. Being able to have the people in the right spot when when TSM is looking to make a play, are the little things contracts is looking for a play mid Keeping right now? Pushing the bottom lane, waiting until it's so pushed up, up put them back in a power that position. he's not going to be able to find it. Again, getting aggressed on by Ray. This way he's pushing up is really nice because again, he's Monster staying around mid for a really long time before. right now. Ray made sure he was pressing up, that couldn't really happen. Sneaky though. Get out from under that trades happening elsewhere. Kha'Zix has been sitting in this brush area and by the mid turret for like the past 15 seconds, 20 seconds. So he's finally reaching top and he actually stops to get the scuttle crab. He tries to get out. He actually, he actually could stand right here and blast Cone over to the very edge of this Baron pit. But Contrax is coming in. And Contrax, they think, can win this fight. So he's going to back out over the wall because Lee Sin ulted him. And that's going to be the first kill. And then there was a rotation quicker from Bjergsen than from Jensen, which shouldn't happen as Echo. As Echo, you should be the faster one to rotate almost every time. That's how you mitigate that. You just out-rotate. You just have to, which is, again, hard to do against an Echo. But Bjergsen's making it work. And these are tough games to pull off because Ray is 
the one who's ahead in this lane. So they trap him in the Hextech Ultimatum, and Contract jumps in, but can't get the isolation. But Ray, look at the damage the wall right there, thanks that. to Sven Scarin kick. Also barely lived through that and, and was able to blast him over. And Bjergsen couldn't have gotten there. Contract oh. may have been able to actually win out on that fight. The mm -hmm. ultimate from Syndra did almost all of his health, and that it's has just Hauntzer it was right the ghost, even. mind you. Bjergsen this is why you take Ghost again. on Syndra. TSM as opposed to Ignite, because in situations like that, no you won't be able to beat an Echo there. And if she didn't beat Echo to that fight, doesn't really she doesn't win that fight. That fight goes in favor of Cloud9 every Bjergsen time. To control this game with his it was all about which mid lane can get there quicker, do have their first items now and that Ghost made all the difference in the world. We see that the wave is going to be frozen, shoving out. So they're going to take this opportunity to go back to base, cash in some gold, and start to apply pressure in other lanes. Get the Bork finish. And despite the success of C9 on Wild top, Turtle, you know, it has not resulted in a massive They're going to match the back it here. Investments in helping out the rest of the map. So if the rest of the Probably map come back with a little bit more than just Bork. Really yeah, they're also going to get a little bit of additional attack speed on top. Mm -hmm. similar levels of power despite the CS advantage. And now both the supports will rotate back to base. So they're looking for an invade to reestablish vision control around this blue buff again. Right as it spawns, because now they're trying to give this over to Bjergsen. Instead of just securing it on Treason like last time, they're going to put it on Bjergsen, and then hopefully be able to give Bjergsen their blue buff as well. Having a feeling that this was happening, because Syndra was missing from lane, and then confirmed when she showed back up to lane with the blue buff, Kha'Zix says, okay, I'm going to go bottom. I'm going to try and keep our control around this dragon and actually push it out further. Look for a ganker. Can't quite make it work. Again, this gives some control of the dragon pit. They are reestablishing vision control as TSM. Full health already. You can see the Nami pick coming in big right here to neutralize that lane. Make sure yeah, look, they're already back to full health here. Really that was almost a kill. Oh, nearly on the wild turn. But so they're going to get Smoothie here. Yeah, Smoothie was just too far forward there. Trying to fight over the vision control. Especially over an ocean break. Should be a little bit more cautious. When it's a low, low priority dragon early in the game. Sometimes discretion is the better part of Valor. And uh, this guy will let it happen. Beautiful kick there. Then... Tanks up the last turret hit because he knew Jensen was going to kill him regardless. This is the opportunity to get away. Not on the end, but unfortunately Contracts is there. So that's going to be a two for, two for one. Ray's looking to make it more. Ray does get it locked on to Bjergsen. He's going to pull him back. Contracts jumps in. The burst from Contracts not quite enough, but he lives because of Lulu. This is what I'm talking about, you guys. That Lulu has been first picked every game and this is why that Lulu has been doing war and that keeps contracts alive that makes it a free kill an unanswered kill there five kills to five no one's taken down a turret and now the turret's pressured Bjergsen's gonna miss out on a, uh, an entire wave a whole bunch of experience a whole bunch of gold and it all started with them going on the C9 right Sneaky okay Sneaky can't make it out it's about returning some damage while Jensen gets the kill right they're trying to just get Wild Turtle out alive Contracts says no i'm gonna rotate gives ray the, the confidence to commit and the but then the teleport comes in and they say no we're not done because Clyde has ultimate so Clyde comes in gets the cc down locks the hook on uh, the bear trap he flashes a little bit late and contracts gets the kill and we scud through there because oh just barely survives just in case they want to die. Staying in the lane Wolfram here is good because both they backed off, so there's no real threat here. But also, Nami, if given a little bit of time, can no heal them up. And Wild Turtle at least will be as good as me. So Seeing them coming in that, aggressively like this off. makes Nami opt to heal turret. herself so she doesn't get one shot. This is a really good rotation. 
Beautiful ult there from Sven. He's gonna throw a big break back to get out of there. And that's actually gonna be the kill from the timeline. There it is. And Ray going off on Hunter, not gonna be able to connect with that last bit of damage, but he doesn't even dismount. And Contracts flashes in for the kill! He is gonna be answered by Syndra. Sneaky gonna go back into the turn damage, and he is gonna get Biofrost! And that Jensen gives an opportunity here for Jensen to come in. Man, what a messy fight all of a sudden three for three. This is uh, this is very even. Jensen looks like he's going to get this because Wild Turtle is just way too out of position here. He's going for the execute, but I'm not sure he's going to get it. The Proto Belt kill. Oh, man. Swing that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So many times in game five, teams go past it. That is the exact opposite of what's happening right now. And look at Smoothie on the roam again. This bottling from C9 moving up, saving Jensen and starting the fight off right. And then it continues right there. Bjergsen gets the kill on a Smoothie, but everyone sees a play they want to go for. Hauntzer had just juke Bear Trap on a rope to set that up. So Contrast goes in with the flash, but Bjergsen then lands the majority of his skill shots the to finish off The make sure it doesn't aggro on him. And then okay, I was wondering how the they were able to turn so onto the turret so cleanly and get the turret. While the this was happening, it's because the dismount the dropped any aggro that could happen. The eventual chase down from Jensen. So while all that trade was even, do you know first brick went over to Cloud9. So as bloody as that was, that was, as European as that felt, when I say that was a heart full of love for my bloody European friends who love to fight, this turned out actually to be in the favor of Cloud9 because of the objective that happened in the meantime, and wow! That is a Everybody lot of bursts to burst them to right the through, play, which is leaving them vulnerable to right through the dismount, the and still have enough to knock them out. Make a play bottom, while TSM you gotta remember. Yeah, and, and so they while they're the turret on the bot side, this is they're gonna answer these turrets, but TSM comes out ahead of that because like, they also got the kill on Ray there. They're gonna trade control of these quadrants of the jungle. And the team that can kind of catch their breath first and counter the first play that the opponent makes, maybe the ones that come on top here. It's only a one and a half thousand gold lead for The Drake right is coming up, one, three, one, and, and so is the Baron, right but the Baron, so with this close of the game, they're probably not gonna go for that. They're probably gonna go for the Cloud Drake. Be willing so to in swapping control sure of right, these quadrants of the jungle, well, it's actually more effective for Cloud9 because that establishes vision control. All this fighting means that these <laughs> I mean, just look at the line. The line is this there. right I mean, now, of vision control. This means to push through it as TSM to get to the dragon. The you're going to have to take some really risks, and you're going to have to put in some work. Got the items that sure, they've got some vision Jensen smattered there themselves. It's not a complete stranglehold. But the line where they're hurts. conflicting yeah, and, and fighting is so far for forward that Drake is pretty much there for free. So I'm expecting Cloud9 to go to the Dragon. It will be interesting to see if TSM... As they're going all around Baron... I think Spen just checked Baron. Just in case. You never know. Yeah, that's not the way you want to lose game five. A 20 minute Baron rush, though. So. I don't think the Baron rush was what he was checking there. I think he was hoping he could just aggro it onto somebody who was clearing boards. The reason they all rotated top there is to threaten Baron. If they all go Drake, they can trade Baron for Drake if enough people go there. So they say, hey, we understand that we don't have the vision control here. So we're going to try and pressure vision control around Baron and threaten you guys with the trade. Now, they weren't able to successfully establish it and cloud nine has a huge amount of control around the drag the uh, baron as well but the fight's breaking out and even with the invulnerability that doesn't stop them cloud nine moves away on um, club gets to get a super engage that club loves turtle actually does survive the nom is going to keep him alive ray is exhausted just to be safe the dismount gives him enough space he Ray does get really Biofrost at the end of that and can ult back to safety. So that's two for nothing. Drake, and, then and they got the Cloud Drake the off the back two of kills it. They're at the start of it. Barely able to survive thanks to the extra HP from that back. And what's the most dangerous about that now is we notice, okay, there's no more dragons on the map. 
all the way all up for this of this game. is vision Teams in place for Cloud9. So that entire right Baron pit is controlled, pit is controlled by him right now. And that's on the control, only objective on the map outside of Kirtz. The the I mean, just being awesome. able again, to 2v2 there and, and get a kill, that's all that is. The rest of this fight is because it was a 5v4. And the rest of the team for Cloud9... Oh, so Sneaky close. almost died there. That was so close. If Sneaky had died there, this would have been completely like different. It would have been a much better trade. So unfortunate. Good, good sense on Bjerg's and still be able to get Sneaky as the target for his ultimate. But it's just not enough to finish him off in the end. He's just sitting in a side lane. Ray will go in his, and TSM will struggle so much to get map control. And just as far as backline protection for Turtle, this is not like a multiple shielding comp. If the Echo full AP gets on your AD carry, you all in again. And at this point, at this point, neither top laner has like gone insanely off. So if they can ever get a jungler there with them, and the junglers are doing significantly better this game. That's going to be what changes the fight. The 2v1 is just a lot of burst. But because of that, this is what we're talking about. The absolute stranglehold of vision around the Baron means that even if they're getting a kill bottom side, there's no way to stop this Baron. They do throw down a ward, so Camille could have teleported, and it forces them back between that and the scrying plant. Good rotation saying, okay, you guys have success. We know that you guys have backed off. Sure, you're going to get this outer turret in top, but we're all rotating together into mid to get this outer turret and then be able to push even deeper mid into the inner turret. Whereas Lucian can't really push this on his own very effectively because he's going to really be so vulnerable so if he does. Like we are all grouped together and we have control of this mid lane. Complete initiative. So we'll answer this and we threaten well you know, going deeper really if you guys don't rotate properly to defend. And while and all that's happening, Ponsor answers. On both sides, so overall from that play, Cloud9 threatened the Baron at one point, but they didn't get it. And because of that, the threat was one of the things they got. They couldn't get it, so it amounts to nothing. So they got a threat that didn't amount to anything in a turret versus two turrets. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you can't make it happen. They do force the red buff to stay on Svenskaren and not go wild turtle there. Good pressure to keep the hand off from happening. Actually, very difficult for a team composition to play against as Bjergsen Cinder right here because everyone on C9 is so now that the vision control around Baron is a lot more equalized. Going. So that requires a lot of vision control and a lot of setup, which C9 a little bit like to this have, they're really for Cloud9. Plus, there's just so many threats. I mean, there's four guys well, who can take down Bjergsen if he goes in the wrong he spot. He does hit the ultimate on him and then just walk away because he needs to stay back because he's really low but now here comes Bjergsen okay he's not going to be able to get the kill there so he will secure blue onto himself man this is bloody this is a bloody game this feels like a game five but he ulted right out of the fight as soon as he got there and I think that for sure would have been at least one kill Lucian is going to catch that wave top which is one of the ways we talked about Lucian getting everything funneled into him has now taken a massive lead. This is not the case earlier this game. Do anything else crazy. Lucian is going to yeah, be the one who's more of a threat this game, game already, for it sure. It does feel like teams are going to try and break it open as fast and as soon as possible. For TSM, they really are and there's so many Black the Cleavers. Silent, there's though. three Black Monster Cleavers out. Advantage. So all of these physical damage champions are going to be super accentuated in Cloud9, which is why we see like Kled doing so much damage. Kha'Zix doing so much damage. It's because what armor is there is being shredded, which is, again, why you see triple ninja tabby coming out. 
They need to have some like initial layer of armor to mitigate all that pain. Getting haunts are stronger. If haunts are wins that one v one solidly against Ray, they're refighting over the, the Baron Pitt's vision. C nine can make with a one three one, and it's just back to the scene of the crime again. Uh, Sven Skaren spotted bot side. They can see him moving up now. They were looking for another pick on Ray, which was avoided this time. But haunts are up two levels this is, at this point. This <laughs> rotation that just happened is the exact same thing, but with nobody pulling the trigger. They didn't start the Baron. And they didn't fight around here and fight mid. This is just, they rotated up, got control of Baron. Lee Sin was pressuring bot, rotated to mid. And now the initiative is with TSM mid of this, to make this push happen. The there is no Lucian pushing top this so time. Is playing the mid game super smart. That's been great to see the and instead of pressuring mid, the we're going to push to out Kaya the river, team has try and reestablish control over the Baron. Time and time again, they know that there's Ray, a control ward here. Unfortunately, it was close enough to aggro the Baron dive, from the team up. But Hunter is okay with that. Fairly tanky. It's still very far from done. Yeah, and take down the aggro down in the last five or six minutes. But both teams have been very willing. And he's going to rotate back bottom. Everyone wants to have that moment. It looks like he's actually hanging in. Okay, now that he sees Fled there, those moments that lose the game. Still pushing it out aggressively. He's going to rotate bottom. Now that Fled is missing, however, they need to be careful because the initiative is on Cloud Nine right now for engage. Lulu is trying to get these forward wards, not just to spot them and establish better control around Vision, but to give multiple TP points for Kled. And I want you to notice right now, not this engage that's happening here, but the engage that's happening from both of the top laners coming. They might meet each other and fight, or they're going to both supplement this turning into an actual brawl by having both of their strong engages pop once they get a little bit closer. So keep an eye on the main map. The Baron and it looks like they both take safer routes, respecting each other's real damage. Big advantage has been gotten yet by and now both team, sides so are grouped. Something like a Baron is kind of the obvious thing to break the game open. I mean, Cloud Drake is off. Top is no pushing can, in favor of Cloud Nine, Jensen. so they don't. Cloud Nine doesn't have to fight unless they find a strong engage, which this is a really good engage. Look at that positioning. Great ultimate from Wild Turtle. Wild Turtle almost gets burst out by Jensen though, right off the bat. The ultimate from Jensen cancels Camille's ultimate. That's incredible to see. Very clutch play there. They go all in onto Hunter, but beautiful Nami ultimate to get three of them. Hunter still gonna go down, but they take a lot of damage. The dismount from Ray. Three are very low, so they can't turn on the Baron, but that is a kill for free. Many more could have died for them had he not had such a good play. And these fights are so fast. Everyone so just seems close. to be flying around and it makes it that much more difficult to land the skill shots. The bubble bio file frost, incredibly clutch, but Jensen has to be so careful. <laughs> incredibly <laughs> clutch. I haven't seen these before, but me, me and the Caster seem to be on the same wavelength right now. This again. And you can track sneaky again. Beautiful engage again. It's great disengage though. Ultimate. Good ultimate from Wild Turtle. Good heal to keep him alive. They backed out, great redemption, that gives them enough uh, thickness to go back in. Beautiful bubble, Contracts actually jumps into it there, if he hadn't had jumped onto it, he had gone onto Wild Turtle, maybe they could have gotten a little bit more there. That's about it. These aren't, these aren't like the first few games where we're, well, let's talk about this and that and this and that, like these are just, this is some brawly stuff that's happening. Looks like a Ludens, but... This echo is starting to cause Fighting some real over the vision control already. again, but this is credit is isn't much, uh, that much of a fight that's going on. It's, it's just back. like, okay, we walk through and clear out what we can, and then we go back. Had the confidence to do it. I mean, that would be a bit of a risky buy, but maybe game five is the time to do it. Yeah, a bunch of squishy people that he can go for on yeah. TSM. Triple Ninja Toppy being built by TSM doesn't help. A good help point as well. Against the this echo. could be so Luton's Echo, or it could be Death Cap for Bjergsen. He does have a bit of extra penetration already coming out of the Leandres, which helps him with the tankiness. And between the boots and the Leandres, he's going to be doing tons of raw damage. So you would think it's going to be something like a Death Cap or Loon's Echo already just based on those items. And we do see it is going to be the Death Cap. Because it just amps up the damage that's going to be doing, coming through very hard and doing a lot of true damage there with all of the pen to back it Triple up already. Lever, though, gonna help things out. 
Lots of like armor three has come already, out of so Cloud9. So if Yerkson is trying to do a lot of damage in these upcoming fights, if we look at Flood's build, there's no MR, just a little bit of health. Only one MR item, almost no health at all from Kha'Zix. Echo, definitely a lot tankier than your standard glass cannon in there. They forced the Royal Turbo ultimate just to disengage and the flash as well but that's jensen going to have to ult out just to survive the redemptions keep them both pretty heavy the wild turtle is getting a lot of free time with the red buff on so a lot of damage going on Haunter is tanky enough to deal with that and they're going to get the club for free there Having the time the Wild Turtle could get his rune on, auto attacks off with red buff, made that work for them. actually went behind Turtle, making the Clyde ultimate connection on his AD carry. And thankfully, Turtle did have flash or he would have gone down immediately. Carry on the point. Well, I want you to watch this again. Keep your eye on Wild Turtle, okay? So he flashes, but he's completely topped off after this redemption, right? He splits off going top to follow them and pressure them and he's getting it on both contracts and ray this whole time he can't quite finish off contracts but ray can't even get over the wall there he was prepping to knock himself back over it couldn't quite make it happen and we did see in that fight, Ray had mainly itemized for dueling against Hauntzer with the Ravenous Hydra, Black Cleaver, and Ninja Tabi. Didn't really have magic resistance, so Bjergsen's all Fighting over the Baron pit again. The vision is not really extending Baron elsewhere. Really it's mostly just back and forth also struggling over this. The struggle is always a little bit deeper. It's around like the Silk Road going behind the pit. So it's always slightly in favor of C9, just by virtue of that, but there's a little bit more control over Since here now, so the front entrance point from mid into, into the river is a little bit better for TSM. Cloud9, I'm going to clear that out and change that right this now. Keeps getting close. So he's just back and forth. They didn't see this now, ward, so this so ward is going to survive and be very same. helpful for TSM. Raptor's getting bored over. Sven gets, I think, the bulk of them. Contract's going to eat the honey fruit, and again, Cloud9 they will just spot the sound and clear it. Pop off of the map around that Baron Ray. He's been so good at Lots not getting of himself control out and now coming the out GA, over here too. An even better threat, either in the side and if someone helped, or in a team fight. I think the GA is going to be the trigger for C9. We it's haven't seen Ray, a lot of push split pushing side, because C9 so much fighting is happening. But there's the GA, right? So now it's a little bit harder for Syndra to make these plays happen. Fled, not nearly as squishy once he dismounts because he's going to have a GA. He's going to have the remount. Knockback as well as Fenskaren's knockback. Then they're hoping that they can Jensen's get the Echo can both ult the and Zonia's. And probably focus Ray while he's in there. So he's a little bit of MR. Oh. A lot of time. Oof. That hurts. Close. And alternatively, TSM can just try to So now that is down. Out of Ray to deal with it that and C9 way. is a little bit more trigger happy seeing that ultimate cooldown up. It is a fairly short cooldown as far as ultimate skill. Particularly this season that they have just risen and risen in power as a team. Their team works great. Their individual talent is pretty stacked. Notably, he has the Ginsu's as well, again, which means he's really looking like to do a lot of sustained damage and, and being a long yes, fight. Into a spot. This, there's Nobody so much burst happening. I'm not sure that that's the best Sven. idea, but Spence Garen almost dies there. Spence Garen got chunked out. They're already on the Baron. Do they have the confidence to go for the 50-50 with the rookie? Both sides have complete vision. Monster, gonna lead. The zone. Ray low enough. He does go back and he has GA. He's gonna have to run with the remount. Can't quite make it though. Even with the Lulu ultimate onto Ray, Blood can't make it out. A little too long time. A little bit too long of a time to remount there. And now they're all around the Baron pit. When they had to disengage there, they might know that this. Teleport's coming in. Round two, Jensen's ultimate's up. Note that the Mountain Drake is up. If this, if both sides disengage, C9 can go for that. 
The ultimate's gonna catch Jensen. He does have to ult out. They're all so low. They they gotta go back. Does not have ultimate, but will soon. And C9 don't have that exact timer. Cloud9 doesn't look like they're healthy enough to make this Baron happen. The game stays even. But like I said, look at this. Sneaky's gonna get this turret for free. They're gonna be able to disengage back here. They're gonna get this mountain drake for free. Sneaky able to get his team the turret lead for the first time in like 15 minutes or so. C9 not rushing oh. straight to the Baron, but at least getting control back in the area. And what a series. And it looks like they're opting to not go for the, tra uh, the Drake. About the way the first four games went. So we'll see who prioritizes getting vision control around the there. Once again. Yeah, so Ray goes in and they actually get it on the Haunter. But he's able to drop that he's ultimate pretty back tanky. out. And Ray... You know, he's getting focused by everyone while they're still zoning oh. pressure, and I, I think that was accidental. Gotta that be a looked, mistake. Yeah. Just right-clicking around your character trying to move, and he hits that blast cone. Yeah. Going back in there with the GA the wasn't the worst thing in the, the world team. because he has yep. GA. Yep. But you don't want to burn GA just for the sake of it if you don't have to. Huge amount of Good pickup by Hanser and Bjergsen to just say, hey, let's just do this, and all the focus is around Dragon. Let's keep the fight going. so highly powered right now. Lots of poke coming in. we're actually going to get another split Because these are But while all that vision control is fighting back and forth, let's just to take the mountain drake and that's going to enable them to burst it down so tsm is a little bit little bit better at melting that dragon down or that baron down quickly but they're not all here yet look at how far away wild turtle is note that camille is teleporting in they're not going to risk the steal. They're going to turn on the Haunter. Haunter is alone. Very isolated here. He's going to go down. And that might mean the, dry, or the Baron here. They're all four group now. So if they can get the engage, there's a lot of balls stacked up for Bjergsen. Playing it patient. And look, now they just start up the split push as Hauntzer. The split push yeah. over TSM is down. Okay. Jensen is so top lane's the top side. They got two waves effectively pushing. Lanes. So the other right four now, are going to come right up mid lane here threatening a turret turtle. and pressure the inhibitor no turret. Safe under this turret allows Jensen to play this one safe Haunter as they rotate over, teleport. looking for picks in the jungle. Dangerous, but they they do can't not find Bjergsen. And this jungle is very defensively warded up. But they might go Baron now. And they do. The two scries coming out. The They're they gonna peel right off again. Get, any type of pick would mean the go button for C9. Contract slows down turtle, but no other pick there for Cloud9. Enough threat to force C9 to back in at some point. No, nope. all, all this against is happening. Bot lane has and been pushing like in reset. for TSM. So, these teams are so the cross map the pressure so, so is in their favor. It's gonna force Fred to go down there, which is huge like because Fred doesn't have this teleport. So TSM is in a much better position to rush this Baron than C9 has been recently. And they saw Fred down there. Now he's rotating up through though. So he's plenty close to rotating be fine. All he did was get the wave pushing back in their favor. Now the wave is going to stack and push into TSM. I mean, they have a one through one cover. They're playing 4 1 for the most part. It's really TSM. Echo's going to make this pressure happen top. The rest of them are mid. have been that close for that reason. And I think part of it is all the engage that's available. And Jensen is going to just got to make it out of here. Monster doesn't want to let him. He may be caught out. See, I need to push. He does have ultimate if he can just get in range. He's got to be careful. He'll be all back there. Monster goes. Can he get in range for the ultimatum? Tag by Spam, but Ray. Oh, can't make it over the. Whoa. They collapse and they're, they have yeah. inside track on Ray mid lane, loses but the, the ultimate off of play. C9 look like they were pushing mid lane, but they go to save Jensen instead of leaving him to solo run away, narrowly escaping that one. Does cost him the Cloud ultimate. Again, feels like the teams are really playing tightly knit together. Everyone just wants to make sure they are there. The instant a 5v5 could be Both of the side lanes are pushing in favor of C9 right now. Jensen's going to make sure top really pushes even harder. To the mid lane and making sure with his team. That opens and up to an opportunity to engage, though, because they see Jensen top, and he, he does have TP. Glad going to get the dismount, but they go back into him. The Lulu ult going to keep him alive. He does go down, but he has GA up. No kills just yet. But that last little knock with Bjergsen, the E, gonna finish off contracts. That's the jungler down. All they have to do is survive this, and they have initiative over the objectives. 
Beautiful in second. But they can't quite find the damage to finish him off. Okay, okay. Okay. Alright. That's gonna be everybody. Hunts are still out there. That's it. So here's what we were saying, right? As soon as that happened, as soon as they got this pick, okay, everyone pile into the redemption, everyone retreat back. Disengage, I know that raid looks juicy, but let's disengage, secure our kill of a jungler for free, and just pocket that, and we can take Baron. Hauntzer's too far forward, still fighting, but the problem is... Hans is very tanky and full health. He can leave. He's fine. He's actually the only one who doesn't die in all of this. So he's fine. I would like to see him disengaging a little bit harder. But the reason he's not is because Sven gets the Q onto Sneaky and says, I want to get this kill onto Sneaky. Okay, great. You insect Sneaky. Flashy play. Highlight of the game. But what does that do? Wild Turtle has to flash just to get into proper position. But Sneaky has both the summoners up still. He flashes, he heals, the heal hits Kled too, and now they're in good position for the skirmish again. Because he he ulted them to nobody. He ulted them to a zone where Wild Turtle had to flash just to get in combat. But now Wild Turtle's in the thick of it for Jensen to come burst him out. That's exactly what happens. Sneaky gets to disengage into the back. He has Lulu to cover him. Jensen got a huge burst. On to Wild Turtle, who's now dead. And now look at this. This is a 4v3. These are cooldowns burned. There's no ultimate. No ultimate. No ultimate. No ultimate available on the other side. But when that's the case, the 4v3 is even more accentuated. Kled still has the power of a dismount. Sneaky still has his power to dash in and out. He does wind up going down. But they get Bjergsen on the back of it. And then Biofrost goes down too. If TSM had taken that kill on Contract and just disengaged out, that's it. Like, they have complete control over that Baron. They can take that Baron for free. Instead, they went back in for the fight. TSM, since Garen specifically, seeing that opportunity with Hanser near Sneaky, and his Q having connected on the sneak, he says, I'm going for the insect. Right there. That's it. And he didn't stop to think, where am I insecting him to? Watch this one more time. That seems like they're playing scared. C9 now their largest lead of the game, but it didn't start that way. And it's the final E damage that works its way through the hex drinker passive. And look at this. Wild Turtle just used his ult here to stop the engage. To stop the game, the Varus chains were used here defensively to disengage. If they really wanted to go for this, he would have used it offensively here onto Sneaky. They're on different pages right now. And then they safeguard back and this then go in. It's just so in disjointed. Fight these fights are so fast with so many dashes. And Turtle flashing forward into Jensen there. Criticized so many times for the... Turtle has to flash in there because of the insect call that Sven Skaren made. But that's exactly why you don't make that insect call. That, that has nothing to do with Wild Turtle. That flash was absolutely necessary. But the problem is, as Varus, if you don't have your arrow up because you've been disengaging with it, if you don't have your ultimate up because you just used it to disengage, if you then have to flash... You flash into what? Auto attacking? You, you can't do it. It can't be done. It just can't be done. So now Cloud Nine's on the Baron. They have complete control over the pressure. He has the lanes are here and here. They have complete vision over where they are. So now this is uncontested. Now they have Baron. Now it's not just a kill lead. Now it's not just some gold. It's actually Baron. I love, I love that Baron particle effect. Yeah, there's four and a half thousand display screens for the players there. Are you just... Ah, oh, that's so unfortunate, man.
in this case and blood they just they got the, the kill on the contract and thought i wanted more so like i want to make this now. the end of the game like easy no it's the, the game was so close you got that like kill by a hair hairline margin you need to act like it you know right now he's so confident treat it like the hairline margin transitioning that because of flood initiative back away and secure it and then you can use it Sneaky's gonna survive thanks to the Lulu and shield and ultimate. If C9 can heal back up with the blade Lulu of Rookie, has been the MVP of this Pearson's entire series. Up, it could be huge for them. Yeah, it's a low cooldown with all the CDR he's built up with that Morel and Omicron and Phoenix Codec, but TSM want to try and use this before he heals up. Sneaky ticking slowly up in health. He does have Blade of the Ruined King. It will be. And look at how fed Bjergsen is too. He's 7 3 and 1. With that additional cooldown reduction, like they were just talking about. That's so much. If he can get two ultimates really out in a cycle of fights, do. that's yeah, huge. They're, they're on Elder Drake right now, which is okay. It's saying, all right, we done goofed. C9, you guys got the Baron, but we're going to force you to waste some of the time with the Baron away from where the Baron actually affects, which is all the minion waves, and come answer us trying to get this Elder Dragon. So this is great. A great call to go on this. Whether or not it's the best, like, you know, I don't know if we can win this fight. It has to be done to mitigate the fact that they're using Baron the and you can't go. answer right. that Baron. Bit of ultimate there to delay the engage, which creates a bit of a disjointment in this fight. Sneaky's not going to be able to immediately become well, a factor. And it's going to mean Elder Drake, Elder Dragon, is going to put a lot of damage onto their team. Hauntzer teleports in the middle of them. Looking for an opportunity to maybe pin down Jensen yeah, here. Out, he does go for it, doesn't quite like find it. But then he does find it. He actually does get the ultimate onto Jensen. And the Syndra is going to get the kill. Her ultimate's almost up again. That's Jensen down. That's Ray down too. And there you go. There's three return kills for nothing. That's the calm, calculated play from TSM that we wanted to see earlier. We know they're capable of. And okay, wait, you want a base race because you've got Baron? We're going to send people back. We're going to acknowledge that you're going to get something off of that. Good for you. But we got the Elder Drake. We got three kills. We are going to get turrets ourselves. And depending on if they can interrupt the recall, which they do, they might actually kill Sneaky here. Either. They do. It's the Elder Drake coming in. They're not fighting in the minions. So that Baron buff does nothing. That's it. They get to end off of that. This is exactly why you have to prioritize. When a team gets Baron, you have to prioritize pulling them away from their minions. And if you get Elder Drake, I don't care if they have Baron. Baron gives you no stats in combat. It only gives you the power to shove those lanes. If you can force those fights, you can win. That is absolutely earned by TSM. That is great sense to say, okay, look, let's go back to this. See how they're splitting right now? If they wanted to go for this Cloud9, the time to do that was when TSM all went for this Drake, or for the Elder Dragon. If they're all going for Elder Dragon, they're going to win in combat stats fights after that. And if you want to punish them trying to take Elder Dragon, then you have to use Baron, which you already have. Shove up mid. Make them lose an inhibitor for Baron, then reset. Go back. Wear down the timer that they have Baron. Create pressure in other lanes and just time out their Baron. Or time out their Dragon using your Baron to keep the pressure up. So play defensively. And by the time they actually use that Baron to pressure in deep enough to get to this... Because these are all up. All these inner turrets are up right now for C9. If, by the, if they have pressed like that, and one best case scenario force TSM to not even go for the Elder Drake, they say, okay, you called our bluff, we got to uh, recall back to base and try and stop you from getting that inhibitor. They probably get this inhibitor turret and can, as a team, disengage back to the Elder Drake, and they might get the Elder Drake for free. And then they can come right back and take the inhibitor and possibly end the game. That's how close that was. 
But instead, they chose to fight. They chose to say, hey, we have Baron up, and we're not going to use it because we think that Elder Dragon is too important. That's great. Great by TSM to force them into that decision, but you can't prioritize it so much. After investing so much, we saw that several times they fought deathly so over getting control over that Baron pit, and when they finally take Baron, they don't use it. They let themselves get baited in to coming after Dragon, and then they lose because of it. Then they lose. I just I completely disagree with that. If you take the mid inhibitor and you have super minions pushing up that wave and you still have Baron for what would have been another minion and a half, you can all recall, you can use that Baron to accentuate the push in other lanes. And sure, they have an ability to fight you because they all have Elder, but they're not going to be able to fight you because they have to stop the minions. They have to deal with the Baron up minions in the side lanes. They have to deal with the super minions coming in in the mid lane. They have to deal with the Baron up super minions in the mid lane. If you send your like safest, most highly mobile champion there to disengage when they go too deep, because that's the wave that's going to be pushing the farthest for forward into their base. If you do that, then you, one, again, in best case scenario, could get the Elder Drake on the back of it by calling their bluff, saying that, oh, you want to trade Elder Drake when we have Baron buff and can push down and take your inhibitor? We'll make that trade, but they don't. They want everything. You have to recognize that you can't get it all. Certainly not in a game this close. And TSM, TSM recognized that. And TSM tried to pressure and take, say, okay, we're, we're willing to give up our inhibitor if that means we can get the Elder Dragon. And if we get the Elder Dragon, maybe we only get a 30 second window after, maybe one minute window max after we get control over our waves again and are like recovering from losing the mid inhibitor turret and the final duration of that minute and a half of Baron. But that's time that we think during that window of opportunity for that minute, we could either one, establish control of vision around the Baron Pit or pick a fight with you guys. But then they didn't even have to pick a fight. C9 came looking for a fight. And that's what you can't do. You can't come to fight when you have an opportunity. They were giving them the inhibitor for free, for free. And they couldn't successfully challenge. We saw they tried. They didn't successfully challenge the Elder Dragon. They, they did such a, like, TSM was in such a more optimal position for it, having gotten there first, having been able to prep it first, that when they finally did get there, they killed them three for zero and took the dragon. That's how much better control over that area TSM had. And Cloud9 didn't respect that. You have to respect that if they're doing that, they have control over that zone, and you can't just walk into that, especially if you're coming into it with nothing to back you up. Cloud9 had two drakes. Sure, they can rotate there quickly, but they don't have any combat dragons. And aside from that, the gold was even for them at both, at both of them at the same time. So all that makes the difference is the positioning and the preparation. Which, since you're all running into it to respond, you're not making a proactive play. You're not saying, we are taking your inhibitor, and we are punishing you, and we might even pressure your nexus turrets. If you're not making that proactive play, you're making a reactive play, you're going to run into something with a vision disadvantage. And when the only difference is prepping a zone and having a vision advantage, if you give that up, and you run headfirst into something, even though they didn't literally face check like a fanatic death brush, it was almost as bad in a macro sense. Because they could have made the play mid, and they chose not to. They chose to fight over the dragon, and not use the Baron that they spent all game working up to getting. They used it for, I don't know, all of like 30 seconds. And then they stopped using it. And then they went to dragon. And you just can't do that. You spent all game getting Baron, you have to use it once you have it. Oh, it's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate, Twitch chat. Oh. <laughs> but that was a good game. These are really good games. As much as I harp on that, hell, I would make that mistake nine times out of ten, too. I, I, it's easy for me to be the armchair uh, analyst 
<laughs> with being able to pause, rewind, think about it. Ugh, it's just, it's so unfortunate. And that's something that I, I harp on too in my game sometimes. If we have Baron, I always try and use it. So I'm hypercritical about that. I'm hyper-focused on that because it's something that I've been analyzing in my own games. <sighs> well, it's good to see that pros pros make that mistake too and mismanage that Baron use too. It's not just me. <laughs> so, well, hey, this was, this was a very close series. I can't believe it ended on such a close game. I can't believe that both sides had blowout games, and it was a Game 5 series. What an incredible finish to the North American Finals this year. I hope you guys enjoyed the ride. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me to watch these finals. And uh, we're going to hang out. We're going to play some more games just to get a few games in. And, you know, stay hanging with us. For those of you watching on YouTube, thanks for joining me. I hope that uh, providing a little bit of context through this casting helped break down the game a little bit for you because I know not everybody is uh, that, that knows me is as into League as I am. <laughs> so hopefully it gives you a little bit more context and appreciation for the finals, what we just witnessed. And I'm very confident that TSM is going to go ahead and carry us at the midseason Invitational when they fight all the other international teams. And uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.